November 27th, 2018, Town Council meeting. Uh, roll call, please. Mary Bell. Andy Schaefer. Here. Andy Key. Present. Trey Roby. Here. Luke Gear. Present. Tyson Hacking. Here. Matt Bilgren. Here. Rich Gardner. Here. Tyson, would you mind leading us in the application, please? <clears throat> Our dear Ken Henley Father, we're grateful for the many opportunities that we have and for the service that we can contribute. We ask thee to bless us that we can focus on the town and be able to help the town progress. Bless us to do what is right and we're grateful for the men and women that have served in our military for the sacrifices that they've made. Bless them to be comforted and fill the love. And we love thee and say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lisa, would you mind lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Item 5, meeting of the minutes. Discussion and action to approve the meeting of the minutes. <coughs> Of the November two thousand November thirteenth, two thousand eighteen. Make the motion to move to approve the minutes from the meeting November thirteenth, two thousand eighteen. The motion has been made by Trey. I'll second. Second. Right. second by Matt. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Petitions and public input. I th I think we'll just wait till we get down to your section. Lisa? Okay. Welcome, Alden. Nope. Thank you. Um, some of you I don't know. I'm Alden Vandenbrink. I'm the district manager for the Rio Blanco Water Conservancy District. Um, and uh, I, I, I wanted to update you a little bit about uh, what we've got going on. This is a really strong microphone, by the way. Um, and... Uh, Especially, mostly pertaining to the reservoir project. Um, about two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, we were awarded another grant from the state in the amount of $350,000. That grant will be used for uh, seven key items for us, but uh, a couple of primary items that are really coming out of there is uh, we're going to be doing a, a, a recreation plan for this project. Um, and then a purpose and need for the project. And that purpose and need is kind of one of the things that I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more here on uh, briefly. But uh, the, 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 one of the important things that I wanted to share with you folks as well, and, and I'll be expressing more of this with my board tomorrow night, is uh, the strong words of commitment that came from the state of Colorado. Uh, their waters are, or wrong term there, uh, John Stolp. Um, and another uh, high-ranking official within the state that had asked as part of this grant, since the state is funding half of this project right now, or of this uh, study right here that we're getting ready to do, or this task, it's not a study, um, is that Colorado needs to store water too. And Colorado's looking key, very keenly at the White River to store a substantial amount of water. Now, we don't know what that volume is yet. That's for them to figure out. But the words that came from them was, you build us a dam, you build a dam because Colorado needs to store water. That came from them two gentlemen in two independent discussions. I'll be talking more with my board tomorrow night about that in greater detail. But they're also getting prepped up right now to where there's a transition team for the new governor coming in. Our project is part of that transition. And, uh, it's the only water project of this magnitude being carried forward underneath the new, new project, or underneath the new administration coming into our state. So that's very exciting. Um, and our goal uh, with this is to, by October 1st, and we'll ratify this tomorrow night, is to file for our notice of intent to permit for this reservoir on October 1st of, ne of, this, of next year. So we've got a whole lot of time, a whole lot of activities to get done here prior to filing for that notice of intent. Remember, that's still a goal, but that is our goal is to file next year. 
and to get all our financial partners enrolled or in, in, um, lined up for that. So, but with that purpose and need statement, we're also working on um, getting our water rights for that all lined up. Um, you've seen a letter that was submitted to you a couple of weeks ago. We got the same letter. Really within that letter, there's nothing a real concern that we didn't know we had to answer anyway. So it's, it's no real surprise in there. But at the same time, I know that the town of Rangeley is going through their diligence right now too uh, for their water rights. And the last time I went through that with the town, they were taking, they were trying to take about 80% of the town's water right. Peter and I worked quite a bit on that with uh, SGM Engineering and recognizing this, where the state's going with their water, it's going to get a whole lot harder to maintain any of your water rights if you don't have a plan for these water rights to put into beneficial use. As I'm finding out, it, we just did here, ours here just a couple weeks ago and finally got it resolved. It took us over two years to get that. It usually takes six months. But um, I, I see with us moving forward, my board is looking at doing a master plan next year for their water rights as well. And uh, I think there's an opportunity here for, with Rangeley, since we're doing our master plan for our water rights, for the two of us to probably put our heads together and help the community with their water rights to develop a vision. As we're doing the same thing out there, we're trying to do a vision not only for Rangeley, Colorado, but for actually Western Colorado and the state of Colorado, where this vision is actually growing. And I think it's an, in, it's, it's an opportune time for us to kind of sit down and start working very collaboratively together on developing these water rights that we have. Um, and doing a formal plan. Um, this is just me kind of talking, um, recognizing what I've seen happen in the state, and it's just a recommendation, because I, I think there's some good that we can really come together by putting our brains at work. Because it's really, when you do your, mass, your, your plan coming up here um, and your diligence, you can kind of shoot for the stars, folks. It's really what it is. It's your vision of what you see for your community. So, and from what I'm learning, I, I think there's some benefit that you could share with us for us to include with what we're, we're doing out there as well. And the, the time is, really seems to be right here. So um, I know next week I've been talking with Jocelyn. I've talked with other town staff. I've talked with other county and state people. Um, it really seems like we're getting real close to having something formal happen here. So. Uh, I don't want to take any more of your time, but uh, I just wanted to make sure I shared that with the board because I, I think it's, or the council, because I think it's, the time is about prime for that to happen. So if the opportunity happens and you want to work collaboratively with us, we would welcome that at the Rio Blanco Water Conservancy District. And to, I, th I think we can complement each other very well. So. Great, thanks, Alvin. Care about ask a question? No, absolutely not. Um, just, is there anything we as a board can do to better prepare ourselves, maybe for that conversation? Like, is there any <coughs> suggestions you might throw out that would be things we should possibly, possibly consider thinking about? We'll put it that way. If there's any, you know, it's it's kind of like, like I said, it's a, the sky's the limit. But if you have anything in mind that might be water related to develop water within rank or rangely um, that pertains maybe to your water rights or maybe um, that would help be an economic driver for your community, um, an irrigation system. I, I know that's that's expensive. I was part of that study. I understand it. I, I More so than what I can, can, I can share with you right now. But uh, if you have a new industry, maybe that would be you use a substantial amount of water. Um, you, it's really trying to be thinking, if you had an unlimited water supply, all your water needs were met, what could you do with it? Where could you go with it? What could that provide? It's Rangeley's vision statement, not the state's, not the feds. It's Rangeley. You dictate what happens here. And too much of that comes from where the state tells you, I don't think Rangeley's quite going to grow that much. Hmm. Who are you to say that? That's our vision as, as Rangeley, not yours. So that's that creative thinking that's starting to happen out there that I know other communities are doing too, and it's making for some very frank and dis frank and direct conversations with the state. So, um, Andy, did that kind of help you out a little bit? Yeah. Are you looking at? Yep. Thank you. So you bet. Anything else for Alvin? Thanks, folks. Thank you.
Uh, any changes to the agenda, Lisa? Yeah, we're going. Jocelyn is going to talk in the supervisor's report. I asked her to talk about our um, Blueprint 2.0 outdoor rec plan, but maybe if she doesn't mind, she can also update you on our conference call with Balcom and Green about the water rights. Do you want to do that now? Okay. No, we'll get to that in a second. Um, public hearings. I thought I thought we have to wait 30 days to okay um, committee committee and board meetings from the council I don't think uh, the um, CNCC uh, that networking, Community networking yeah that, that was a really good uh, eye-opening that the uh, college is looking to not say diversify but it, they're open to maybe new types of training and and uh, certifications different programs and, and are they're actually soliciting ideas from the community if there's certain training needs you know uh, that that they could help with so just trying to diversify and become you know not just degreed programs but offer certifications as well so anything that we can do to support them I think it'd be helpful and they're trying to bridge that gap where they come down the hill and we go up the hill and have more interface between what we do and they do was there any discussion about like the tech side of things, like computer programming, anything, anything along those lines? Do you know? Not so much that. No, uh, they talked about a welding program and other kind of vocational technical, but just they're thinking out the box. So if you have anything, you know, share it with Ron or any any contacts you have at the college. And I actually asked the VP that spoke today to come and talk to the council in January, so they can kind of give us a summary of all the input they got and that would be a great opportunity for us to talk to them about any ideas that the town council has or is that a is that an open window i mean like you can just like write them an email or anything oh sure 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 okay. but they're going to be working on it you know for a while but i just asked him to come and talk to the town council because they'd like to start interacting more with you know the different entities and also community members so but I agree with Matt. It was a really good meeting. Okay. Any other reports for from council members? So I was at AGNC the 23rd? No, 14th, sorry, 14th. And we, we had a really cool conversation there. The department, of, it's CDOT, but it's the aviation, the aeronautical division. They came and talked to us about, like, a lot of funding that's available through that for, for airport development stuff like that so it, it's a tool we can really I think open up some conversation with because we have had some serious conversations about what we can do to help the airport to try to bring in businesses stuff like that like they're they're really open to helping and they have a pretty good uh, from from his presentation it sounds like they have a pretty strong revenue stream and, and are pretty willing to help in, in communities they can it was pretty interesting. Um, they're getting very virtual with their their uh, calls, not call centers. What are they called? The towers, the control, control towers. towers. Yeah, like it, it was crazy. It was, they were showing us pictures of it. It was pretty cool. But um, the other thing was we talked a lot about the transition team and stuff like that. And uh, we better be on our toes. Um, things could get real ugly real quick around here. So just pay attention what's going on just be ready because it's it's scary so, right. sorry not to not to be a debbie downer but whatever it thanks is what debbie. it is <laughs> thanks debbie i appreciate it yeah anything else from the council um supervisor's reports we'll put you in right here jocelyn I think the first thing Lisa asked me to talk about was uh, the water rights issue. So every six years, we have to do dil due diligence on our water rights. And uh, we file an annual report with DNR uh, regarding our uh, water usage, what we divert at the river pump station for the water plant and the eastern irrigation system, what we divert at Camper Park for the main part of the raw water irrigation system, and then a small system that we have at the wastewater treatment plant. 
And so we'll be submitting those numbers for 2018 in the next couple of weeks. Um, but as part of that due diligence, Peter had hired SGM uh, engineers and Balcom and Green, which is a um, law firm that does water rights issues, to prepare our uh, response or our application to maintain the conditional rights that we have. And I didn't bring the exact numbers with, with me, but we have quite uh, a number of CFS that is absolute right that we use for the water treatment plant and uh, the raw water irrigation system. But we have 3.1 CFS that we have maintained for, uh, you know, recent past as conditional rights. And so that's the part that we're required to do due diligence on and demonstrate that we have a plan to divert and beneficially use that. And, and to my knowledge, we are not using all of that now. So we had a water commissioner come up last week, and we gave her a tour and showed her the things that we're doing that will increase the consumption of that part of the conditional right. For example, you know, in the last couple of years, we've been doing work at the wastewater treatment plant. We dredged Pond A and relined it. And so a lot of the area that would normally be irrigated to create grassy berms for flood control have not been doing so because we didn't want to add water to the sludge that we were trying to dry. That didn't make any sense. So part of the problem is we do not have an actual flow measuring device for that system at the wastewater plant and that's coming out of the river right there at the little park. Uh, so part of Don's plan is to add, to upgrade the equipment and add a flow measuring device there so we have a definitive way of calculating and showing what they're, we're using there. But we also told them that we have every intention of uh, expanding the irrigation system throughout the wastewater plant to use more water there and restore the green berms, et cetera. But we also need to demonstrate a plan to either uh, use that water for industrial purposes or I think they call it piscatorial and recreation purposes, so swimming or recreation. So. While the commissioner was here, we had quite a long talk with her about the work we've done to try to uh, start thinking about developing uh, additional river access points, which would allow recreational use of that water uh, going past town. And we've, we've also talked about, I mean, there's quite a number of options. One of them is to file an application to divert that water at Camper Park instead of at the wastewater plant. And that's... That, that water right or that quantity is basically the volume that the wastewater plant produces and discharges right there. So they really want us to use it there or downstream of there. But if we could adequately show a need for it in the raw water irrigation system diverted at Camper Park, we could conceivably apply to change that point of diver diversion and use it there. We also had submitted a map that talks about long-term growth and development of Rangeley uh, and using that as a justification. But I think really where they're getting to or the point they're at is saying, you've been you know, asking to maintain this as a conditional right for a long time. You have to show that you have plans to divert it and put it to beneficial reuse, and it sounds like they're getting impatient with us doing that. So part of the work with the engineer and the lawyer is to kind of decide what the most effective uh, diversions and uses uh, would be, and then to make that application to continue to have access to those water rights. So we'll be working on that in starting next week to develop that response to DNR, and we probably should... Uh, have a work session or at least a discussion about, you know, the costs and benefits of the options that we have there. Uh, one of the alternatives we have is to continue to maintain that as an industrial water source. You know, as Peter pointed out before he left, we have no more platted industrially zoned land in, in Rangeley is my understanding. And, uh, so 
if we were to make industrial water available or if it were available and we looked at some different land use zoning and, and, and changes, we could encourage some other industrial growth with access to that water right. So that's one opportunity. The other things we need to look at is whether we want to develop an increased and larger uh, irrigation system or distribution system for that water at the wastewater plant where it's presently being diverted or whether it's more cost effective for us to apply to have it diverted at Camper Park where we already have pumps and pipelines and a way to get that water into the raw water system uh, more quickly and demonstrate the ability to use it that way. So we've got some discussions and decisions that will have to be made in probably the next two weeks to 30 days time frame that we have to respond to the state engineer's request for ad additional information as part of our due diligence package. So I think that's what Alden was alluding to a little bit. And if there's a way to demonstrate recreational use via the reservoir, to me that seems a little bit of a stretch since it's significantly upstream and that right that we have right now is at the wastewater plant. But we can look into the feasibility of applying to relocate that point of diversion. That's one alternative. So those are the things we're looking at for the water rights. And I'm happy to talk to anyone that has issues or questions at any point. How, how much raw water do we pull out? Um, I, I'm guessing the CFS is daily, or that would be, yeah, is that a daily figure? The Cubic feet one? per second. So, you know, you calculate it based on the number of seconds in a year in an annual, you know, rate. So it's just a flow rate. What are we pulling yeah. out of raw water right now? I want to say a couple hundred million gallons. Yeah, because the golf course uses a ton. Right. Um, so I guess what I'm getting at is it's my understanding there's a study. We Like the town's actually paid for a study for a raw water irrigation system in town, correct? And we correct? discussed that yeah. with the lawyers about the raw water, and that's why we were talking about diverting those rights to the raw water station rather than this. You have right. to do, use them there rather than at the sewer plant. Right. We do have a study. Okay, and that, I guess what I'm, I'm trying to put together is how much of that would, would accommodate the 3.1 CFS. 3.1 CFS isn't really all that much water. I, I didn't bring, you know, numbers to tell you how many acre feet that is, et cetera. Right. Um, we have a much greater overall absolute right for our drinking water system and our existing uh, raw water irrigation system. So that 3.1 is, you know, a very small percentage of what we are using now, but Clearly, we would like to not lose it if we can make that so. So, again, we're going to have to look at the feasibility of expanding the distribution system at the wastewater plant for other uses right around that facility or nearby, which would involve building additional distribution piping, et cetera, or request to be able to divert it at Camper Park instead, put it into our existing raw water irrigation system, and then expand the commercial and town entities that could have access to it, which would increase the demand for it. And to me, just back of the envelope analysis, that is a quicker and more cost-effective way to do it because the distribution system and pumping facilities are already in place. And we have people clamoring to get on the raw water irrigation system. So that's probably going to be my recommended well, approach to people, it. We have people write along the existing system without even expanding it out. We've got churches and right. that we could go oh. to pretty easily and expand the system without putting in more infrastructure. I guess that's my question is, is, is that enough? If we did just those, would that be the, cover the 3.1 CFS? Or? I, I believe so. Andy, again, I, I need to run some calculations to more accurately answer that, but I believe we, we could do that relatively so easily. What about looking at a full-scale raw water to every citizen in town type project? That, that would that require would be, pretty dramatic development of, you know, a separate system. distribution mm -hmm. system, which is really expensive. Right, and I understand that, but Dola Let's remember, too, money, if so. you take it out of potable water, we might have to increase our potable prices in order to, yeah. I mean, there's I always all a fine line right. to 
you know. Yeah, but water we, rights are something you don't want to lose. Well, that's fine. Right. We could put the study together where we were looking at putting in a raw water distribution system to every citizen where we can keep our CF. That study we, is already done. We already have that study, the raw water. Is there any way we can get that right. pushed? Well, right. We could have a, a multi-phase development where we, in where we could afford it, you know, but still maintain it. Eventually, we will we will utilize the 3.1. Is there any way that we can, you know, I know there's been a lot of discussion with Alan about the reservoir and, and for them to be able to get the rights to the water to fill the reservoir. Uh, initially, I mean, can we defer our rights temporarily to that project? I'm not sure if we can with conditional rights, Matt. I, I don't know enough about it to be able to answer that question. I, mean, I think that way we could do our part to help fill the reservoir. You know? Right. I, I think if we can show that we have a plan in the near future to utilize that 3.1, then we can hold on to our rights and allow its use in other ways until we uh, create the, you know, the piping system and the what, whatever it is that we need to beneficially use it ourselves is my understanding, but that's something that I'll be finding out more about in the next week or 10 days as we start working on this. Uh, you know, my recommendation just off the cuff would be demonstrate that we can get it into our existing raw water system and use it that way until a, a higher use comes along like supporting an industrial activity uh, you know possibly for example at the old Moon Lake facility a little bit downstream um, something like that and, and preserving the right to change the use of it as the town sees fit as things change and develop over you know the next 5 to 20 years so and I need to look back at the wording because I, I think that right was originally developed and has been maintained with a recreation, piscatorial, and industrial bent to it. And so a, irrigation might be a lower priority use for the state, so we, we have to weigh those things. Will we be successful in our application if we choose the use that is lower value to them, or would it be better for us to pursue one of the higher value uses, even if it's more expensive or could take us longer to develop the absolute way to do that? So, you know, these are really important questions that we'll be answering in the next couple of weeks as we look into this more. Yeah, we could develop some green zones in the areas where we already have uh, water available. You know, and they could use that up. And just put paths, things like that. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we'll get some hemp farmers in town. <laughs> and we may want to, and we may want to preserve the ability to do that by having an industrial or a, you know, agricultural right to do that. So we're going to look at all those options and figure out what makes the most sense for us. And, and try to look in the crystal ball and figure out what it, what is it that they want, you know, what what is the best answer to this open-ended question they're asking us and what's going to get us the long-term access to those rights and to maintain those those rights. We can't let them take it because they'll we'll never get it back. I agree. I agree. So we're going to have to make some decisions on, you know, cost-benefit. What are we willing to spend to use it as soon as possible to demonstrate that we have a need for it while maintaining our ability to use it in other ways as we, you know, down the road. Um, so the other thing that you wanted me to talk about, Lisa, was Blueprint 2.0. Sure. So this Friday at uh, noon at the hospital, the uh, CU students will be presenting their final report on their uh, Blueprint 2.0 recreation program development recommendations. And uh, anyone who uh, is available over the noon hour, we would uh, love for you to be there and hear what they have to say. Um, we've had um, pretty good... Uh, 
community turnout for the meetings that we've had so far and a lot of interest in, in what they're proposing. And uh, I, I think I know a little bit about what they're going to propose, but I, I don't want to take words out of their mouth, so I think you should come hear it from, from them. But uh, I think the direction they're going is calling Rangeley the uh, tire getaway of Colorado. So, you know, they, they started out calling it tire sports getaway. They started out wanting to call us the tire sports capital, but they didn't want to imply that, um, I don't, I'm not sure how to word this best, that it's still kind of quiet and you won't run into 10 bazillion people the way you would in Moab if you came here for your tired sports, tire sports getaway. Um, so they're really trying to put some subtle but powerful spins on it that there's still, you know, tremendous opportunities for, you know, wilderness and quiet and not being overrun by people out there while being able to pursue HOVs or mountain biking or motorsports or, you know, any anything that has a tire, basically. And um, looking at developing festivals that highlight each of those uses and specific times when each of them would be highlighted and bringing in the different user groups and interest groups to partake in those and kind of trying to, you know, be many things to many interested user groups. And they, they've got a lot of good ideas. They're sort of thinking outside the box. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing what they have to say and seeing what they came up with. Uh, the one other thing I just wanted to let you know, uh, the BLM travel management plan, you know, is an ongoing process and, uh, they were requesting comments and, um, I, I commented, I think in October. And as a result of those comments, one of the things they were proposing to do was take some BLM parcels that are along the river and close them. And I said, wait, 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 we don't have very much public land along the river. Please don't close what we have. And I submitted comments about that. And as a result of those comments, they've tentatively scheduled a, a field day up here on December 19th with like BLM biologists and the people doing the travel management plan and Kent Malter to go look at those river parcels like at Olive Garden and uh, I think they're calling it Hard Hardaway Tract Downriver. Uh, I think that's over near Texas Beach. Uh, and, and look at you know what biological reasons they have for wanting to close it and how they could accommodate still providing access to portions of it while allowing you know, flora or fauna to still reestablish in in places. So uh, that's tentatively scheduled right now, um, and we'll be talking to them about so some of the other travel management plan aspects, trail development, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So if any of you have any comments or things you want me to impart to them during that time, I I'd welcome the opportunity to do that. Did you say that was December 19th? December 19th, 9.30 to 3 is what we're looking at right now. Are you meeting here first? Um, I don't have a... a set schedule. A, yeah, I don't have a set schedule yet. Andy, uh, we can request them too if that's something that would be beneficial. We'll see. They, they were calling it a field day, so they wanted to be out in the field looking at those sites and explaining why they think they should be closed and giving us an opportunity to say why we think they should remain open. I may just show up and, and give them an earful anyway. Well, you know, I, I'm sort of impressed that they even listened to the comments, so we'll see. At least they didn't completely ignore us. Thank you for doing that because sure. Texas speech is something that is widely, widely used by, by people here. And yeah. that would be something that is very negative. So I believe they recently uh, closed off those two areas uh, right there on the other side of the river that Chevron recently reclaimed so the vegetation would grow back. I know it's been fenced or it's going to be fenced. 
to limit access to it. Where are you talking about, Matt? Down by Texas Beach? No, or? up across uh, just, uh, I guess, east of the uh, Green White River Bridge. Uh -huh. Uh huh. So we had two sites that were reclaimed. Right. And we had to do extensive cleanup on the river uh, in two areas. And, uh, you know, we've reseeded those areas. And it's, to me, it would be a great park, you know, and access to the river. And mm -hmm. uh, But, you know, of course, you got to let it stabilize and establish growth. I yeah. think at least one of those sites is what they're calling the Olive Garden. I, I could be wrong, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I can see why it needs to temporarily be closed so it can establish ve vegetation so it won't all wash off into the river, but right. at some point in time, it needs to be open back to the public mm -hmm. for, for our use. Well, I went out and looked at each of the tracks. There's, there's three tracks, and two of them are in Rangeley. One of them is upriver, so I didn't go look there. But I did go look at those two tracks and, uh, you know, gave some specific comments on, on both those things. But again, there is so much private ownership along the river and so little public access that I, I really don't want to give up any public lands access without a fight. So uh, we'll see where it gets us. It's the best we can do. Anything else you want me to talk about, Lisa? The 19th at 3... At 19th from 9.30 to 3. They're giving me most of the day. And I think the plan is to go to each site and talk about pros and cons and whys and why nots. Okay. Thanks, Jocelyn. Thank you. Lisa? Okay, so we did get a letter from Riblanco County. We were successful with our grant application for White River Village. So we have a, a grant of 12005 to help with renovations of some of those apartments. Um, I'm working on the final submission for the um, Tanglewood project. We came in under budget by a thousand and some cents dollars. So we're going to get the most that we can out of that. Thanks to Jocelyn left her and Jeff working on that. Um, Unfortunately, our two dispatch trainees decided that they wanted to pursue other careers other than dispatch. So we have three dispatchers now. We've talked to Anthony, and um, they're going to take some of the calls for the week, and we'll be working on hiring new dispatchers. Um, they're willing to do that for no cost right now, so that's great. Yeah, for you know, sure. offering from the county. Be sure to thank Anthony for that. Yeah, for sure. And. Um, We'll get through it. We're going to advertise again and see. Sometimes dispatching is just not for everybody. One decided on just something they wanted to do rather than a shift work, and the other one just decided dispatching was not for them. So we'll move forward with that. Um, we're working on finalizing the synergy agreement, just taking time to get the survey done and finish up those um, paperwork. I laid this out, the Rio Blanco Small Business Development Center. They're going to start some different um, workshops on December 7th, how to start a business, December 10th, end of year taxation workshop, and January 25th, how to have an online business presence workshop. Um, Michaela, who is Caitlin's um, uh, helper, she's going to start coming down to Rangeley at least once a week. Tentatively, they thought on Tuesdays, but that could change. And they're actually going to be in the town hall rather than across from Connie. I think they're having some connectivity problems to the county's um, internet, so they were going to work from here since Jeff doesn't seem to want to occupy that office. They're going to take it over. So hopefully they'll be in here weekly to be of assistance to businesses that are already established or you know people that would like to start new um, endeavors. Um, Shop and Dine is going hard and heavy this week. We've had very little participation and now everybody's showing up. So we'll be finishing that out on Friday and they can spend those by, before Monday or by Monday. So I can give you a better report on that after we get finished. Um, I think that's about all I have right now. Do you guys have any questions about anything else that you may have heard or want to talk about? 
we get an update on the cell tower at all since I asked you about it? Yeah. Haranguing everyone I can find. I, I was given one name by the original engineer working on it. I called her. She said she's not responsible for it. She referred me back to the original site acquisition person with Black & Veatch. I emailed and called her. She said, no, it isn't active as of last week. And she would get back to me. I haven't heard back from them. I sometimes I have five bars and sometimes I have zero bars, so I can't tell. And I have not been able to get a hold of anyone who can tell me. And I'm makes me crazy. I'm still working on it. Oh, can we maybe just do like a? I, I don't know what the best way to handle that, but to where the public knows because that's. We can post people. it out on Facebook right, and also on our once, website. Once we know for I mean, sure it's live. As yes. I told okay. Andy, we're getting paid for it, but, yeah. I mean, we still don't yeah. have the service. Right, and that's that's what I keep getting hit up on is this tower up. I'm like, yeah, I get asked that so, all the time. So that would just be, I think, a nice thing to do once it is up and live. Just yeah, post we up can there definitely so do knows. that. Cool. That's it. Thank you. Is that it, Lisa? Mm -hmm. Anybody have questions for Lisa? Moving on, old business. Uh, I don't think we have anything there. New business. Item A, discussion and action to approve the application for a DOLA Energy Impact Assistance Tier 1 grant for 75000 to fund the collection systems improvement project budgeted in 2019 for $150,000. We kind of gave you a little brief this is Also, this is her... So, so basically, gentlemen, um, you know, last year we did a project on the collection system. Pretty much, you know, from 2011 to 2016 or 17, much of our time, attention, and resources were going into the water treatment plant. And the utilities group had money budgeted every year to do wastewater collections and treatment plant work, and we didn't do them. And what we don't want to have happen is deferred maintenance turn into capital costs. So last year we, you know, overcame inertia, got the ball rolling, did our highest priority, most problematic manhole replacements. This year, Don and I sat down and scoped out the tasks that we really feel we need to pursue this year. Uh, and I'm in the process of uh, starting to put together that grant application right now. We are trying to keep the dollar value low, understanding you know the budget situation for the town, but really don't want to lose the momentum that we're starting, need to maintain that, and do have some problem areas both at the treatment plant and in the collection system that we'd really like to work on each year. So we're trying to balance, you know, budget with need. We, we had a conversation about this in the work session. This is, we're talking about White Avenue, right? The collection I stuff on White Avenue. Well, no, it's, we've got, I've got eight or nine manholes identified in various parts of town. I've got two or three projects at the wastewater treatment plant identified, so it's... This is multiple. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it might not all happen next year. This is something that probably only address. Right. What, okay. what we're looking at doing is trying to have the engineering done for a fairly broad uh, five-item scope, and then when we go to bid, figuring out based on this... 150,000 if we get it how much of that of those bid items we can actually accomplish with that amount of money so we would not exceed that uh, and then we'd have the engineering done so it would be easier to p pursue additional grant cycles you know later on that they are always happier when you're shovel ready and we would be shovel ready at that point So this is in the budget for 2019. That is, is in the budget, and we also put the revenue in there as if we would receive it as well. Okay. Yeah, part of the grant application requirements are saying that we presented it at a town council meeting and, and that town council approved our pursuing the application. So that's what we're doing here. 
Well, then I'll make a motion to approve the application for the DOLA Energy Impact Assistance Tier 1 grant for $75,000 to fund the collection systems improvement project budgeted in 2019 for $150,000. Second. Motion is made by Andy, second by Rich. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item B, discussion action to approve a contribution of $1,500 to Western Rio Blanco Park and Rec District to help fund Christmas Fest. Thanks for your patience and welcome. Will you guys let us know what you're looking for this year? Do I have to stand up here and talk to the microphone? Yep, and you got to say your name. Okay. Hi, I'm Bethany Green uh, with the Rec Center. This is Kirsten Cushman. Um, Fielder. Kirsten Fielder. <laughs> oh, this is Cushman. Um, we are gearing up for Christmas Fest in about a week and a half. Um, one of the events that go along with it is um, a carriage ride with a chili dinner, hot chocolate, uh, s'mores bar. Um, it takes place up on La Mesa. Ryan Hewitt with Wildlife Expressions donates all the chili dinner, hot chocolate, location, s'mores, um, and we've done um, one carriage ride for the past couple of years. Uh, last year, with your guys' donation, we were able to purchase a second or rent a second carriage, um, which helped things move along a little bit smoother. Um, we had about 300 people attend that part of Christmas Fest last year. Uh, so we were just asking you guys if you'd be willing to sponsor or pay for the second carriage, which is about $1,200. And I asked Lisa before the meeting what we did last year for Christmas Fest, and we did fifteen hundred. So that's we do have a, a breakdown if you guys want to see it for the cost of the carriages. So the profits made off of this would go to the uh, recreation district. I don't think there's there's no; it's profit. free to the community, so there's no charge to anybody. Um, it's just oh, it's all a, free. It's all free. So part of the losses the go to the. I, I thought there would be donations or something that would... Um, people tip the carriage drivers, uh, but the rec center doesn't take in any profit from Christmas Fest. It's just like a free community holiday weekend. Are you guys seeing annual growth in it every year? Uh, yes. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah, we're on the same page. Usage, yeah, people doing it, so. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the contribution of $1,500 to Rio Blanco. 12. Parks and Rec. Plus. Second. Hold on. Well, uh, yeah. It says 15 here. It says 15 here. I think they're That's asking. That's what we had on for That is what you guys gave us last year, yeah. I mean, you can change that to. Oh, you're changing that to 12? To 12. Is, okay. Yeah. But if you want to give more, we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> can you use the rest? They need them. Um, yeah, I mean, we do a breakfast with Santa um, that we purchase all of the, the breakfast items and a little gift for the kids. And um, what else do we got going on this year? Snowflake Baby Contest, which is a little competition event for the kids to get out there in their little Christmas vest. And we have little gifts for those guys, too. So it would get used, yes. Sounds like money will spend to me. Sounds <laughs> like that to me as well. Where would it come Economic out of Economic development. Okay. So a motion's been made um, for the contribution of $1,500 to the rec center in a second by Rich. Um, is there any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, guys. Thanks, you guys. Good work. Thanks. Hope to see you there. <laughs> Tyson better be there. <laughs> I'm doing a movie at my house. Item C, discussion action to approve the October 2018 financial summary. Does anybody have any questions for Lisa or Mary Bell? I'll make a motion to approve October 2018 financial summary. Second. So, motion's been made by Tyson, second by Rich. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, I think uh, item 15, the 
did you have anything, Lisa, on A, B, C, or D? I mean, no, we went over most of them, didn't we? I just wanted to, you to see the thank you notes that we got. And obviously, Jocelyn talked about the meeting on Friday. And also, we're having our staff Christmas party on the 7th. And just really like everybody, RSVP, if you're going to be able to be there. We use our junk metal money to help fund the when party. Is, where's the party going to be, Lisa? At the Elks. On the 7th? Yes. Go ahead and put myself and my wife down for that. Okay. And if she's working out, to. just find somebody else to take. Okay. Yeah, and just let us know anytime. Okay. Um, same board vacancies. The announcements are there. Is there anything else that needs to be brought before the council? We'll adjourn at 7.50.